So recently I did this Funko Pop render and it was a lot of fun. I got this template and I UV I got I measured one of the Funko Pops I have. I got the dimensions for the box and I UV mapped it. And UV mapping is one of those things that's a bit daunting and you're like, oh, is it really technical? What is it? And yeah, it can be, but it can also be the most simple process ever just to slap a texture on what you need. So I'm going to show you that today. Uh, if you've got Octane, it'll work. If you've got normal Cinema 4D, it'll work. If you've got Octane, I'll tell you when to start using Octane textures. If not, just use normal textures. It won't make a difference, so you can follow either way. But let's start. Today, we're going to use an iPhone box because uh, that is pretty simple. I've already made one right here. That's the one I used. It's going to probably end up a little different because I think the dimensions are going to be different. Uh, but I've done this iPhone model and it was a lot of fun, so we will do that today. So we're just going to bring in a cube and we're going to make it 16 by 6.2 by 9. Right, okay, we got it. That should be, I measured my I keep packaging because I think packaging is like the coolest thing ever. I appreciate the time that's went into it and I don't know, it fascinates me. So I've always got iPhone boxes lying around and stuff. Uh, so this is an iPhone 7 box, not the size of an iPhone 10. I don't know if it's different, but you know, who cares? Uh, so we're going to have to make this editable, uh, otherwise it won't work. Now the first thing we're going to do is now we've got our cube, we're just going to switch to body paint UV edit. Now that's going to bring up this. Now if you're familiar with this at all, you'll know what's going on. I only know specific parts of it because I've not spent a whole lot of time here. The stuff I do just doesn't require me. And I will tell you this now, I don't know how many artists will agree with me, but when it comes to being self-taught, you tend to learn the things you need to know and that's it. And I don't feel like it's necessary to learn every single thing because the chances of you using that every day are really small. So pretty much when it comes to UV mapping, what I'm about to show you is all I know. No point, you know, not being honest about it. Uh, so you just double click, same as normal, make a new material. You tick this and what we can do now is double click here and create a color. So I think maybe I'll use a red for the background. This will be the background, just like here. It's just good uh, to create some contrast so you know what's the actual texture. And then what we can do is UV mesh, show UV mesh, I'm going to click this here. Or is it this one? Yeah, this one. Right, I'm going to click that, UV polygons and box. And what that's done now is flattened out the layout. Uh, a good way to put this is it's, you know, you've heard of UV unwrapping, you've heard of UV wrapping, all of that is what we're doing. Um, it's like if you take any sort of packaging and just push it down and flatten it out. So here, that's the top, that's the left, bottom, um, back, front, right um, now this is different to that one of course top bottom left right back front um, so hopefully you're getting the gist of it now we're just gonna go and click fill polygons and now it's filled and we're pretty much actually done for the cinema 4d part uh, so we're just gonna go save texture as I'm gonna create a folder for this quickly actually in fact no I'll save it in the other folder uh, save texture as, you're going to save it as a PSD because then we can just open it up straight uh, with all the same dimensions and stuff. Uh, iPhone box, I'll call this one tutorial. I always create what I'm going to show you first just so I know how to do it with precise execution. Call it tutorial. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go to Photoshop, we're going to go to open. iPhone box, tutorial, open. Now we've got this. So now we have our texture in Photoshop. Uh, it gets a little bit easier from, it, it can get a little messy from here, just centering things. But I've got all these assets uh, to create the box. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is duplicate that, turn that off just in case we mess it up. You can just call this like temp or something. And then we're gonna create just some like rectangles around the place of, uh, it's probably better to, 
zoom in a little bit here so we can get it just perfect. Now this is just to make sure everything's centered uh, because we don't have like a template or anything to put on it. This should just help us get everything exactly the way we want it. So if we do that and we zoom out here, we'll just rasterize that and control J. And then if we move that all the way to the edge, now we've got these two. So what we can do is control J again, right? And we can make that blue, for example, control T, drag it out there. And then you're gonna find that if we, that if we drag this one here, change the color, green, paint it. Now we've got all these bits and we've got the top. So now you kind of know where everything is, um, much like the way C4D shows you. Now you can see I've actually got that wrong there, so we're going to flip these. Now of course in this composition I have all the assets ready, so I'm just going to drag them across and uh, I'll include them all separately in the file as well, or if you want to go on Google you can just find them and save them. So we're just going to drag the actual iPhone across and put that in there. Now we just created these to know that we can center them uh, appropriately. I'll grab that next and we can put that there and what this will do is, let me zoom in a bit, and we should be able to There you go. So now we've got that one centered on there. We can duplicate it. Have to pull it above. That one centered there. And then what we can do is we can grab all these, control G, turn them off, and now everything should be pretty centered. Uh, I don't know how perfect you want it, I mean I wasn't overly bothered, uh, but now we've got that on there, we can just save, okay, and I don't know if it will work if we just go open and we open the same one, or yeah, we'll do that. So we can just go save, tutorial two, file open, tutorial two, and now you can see everything is on there. You can see they are maybe a bit too low, um, but I don't think it matters. For all we know, they might not actually be centered on the iPhone box, but they probably are. Shh. Uh, <laughs> So now is the time we use these on Octane textures. Uh, so if you're using Octane, you want to switch to Octane now. And if you're using default Cinema 4D, just do the exact same thing with default Cinema 4D textures. So of course, what I'm going to do is I will make a new material. Now I won't use the node editor, just so you kind of can follow a bit easier. Um, on default Cinema 4D, of course you would just go load image, in Octane we go to Cinema 4D Octane, image texture, click that, click that, and we can go to Tutorial 2, no, and you can see it's UV mapped. Now you can see the edges are actually a bit messed up here, so of course if you look at an iPhone box it's not uh, as sharp as this, I mean it's cardboard, so we can just double click on them, hopefully, no, I don't have the URL, in fact, just control A, uh, bevel, and we just create a bit of a bevel there, do that, go on our selections, UI, oh no, UI, create a new material as white, and we'll just put that on there, and that should get rid of that. And what we will do is just make that fully white, and there we go. 
and then what you can do is you can bring in a HDRI, get some nice lighting in there, just like that, and you can see that now everything is looking how we want it. So that's just an easy way to get your textures onto a box um, if you're trying to do some sort of product render. It can get a little more difficult if you're working with more complex shapes or different parts of models. That's when it does get to that kind of daunting stage. Um, but something as simple as this, that's literally how simple it is. And utilizing Photoshop um, makes it really easy as well. I will show you the Funko Pop one as well. I'll grab that quickly. So you can see this is the Funko Pop one. Um, it took a bit more time to do. Uh, not a humongous amount of time uh, but it came out quite nice and the finished render looked great uh, and that was the exact same technique that we just did here so if you're doing a phone case or you're trying to put a really cool texture on a controller or a PlayStation or even just even sometimes a wall because you know as soon as you have it in Photoshop you can put textures all over these things and uh, get really nice resolutions and you know the thing you want and um, unfortunately it's just stuck down to that specific object because it's UV mapped to that object. I would love to do something like this with a car and get some really really cool car textures and create like um, cool stickers and vinyls and stuff all over it. If you ever used video co-pilots jet strike stuff and you can take out the textures put something on it in After Effects and then it will load into the actual uh, 3d model it's just the same thing so it's really simple um, so I hope this tutorial was useful if it was please let me know like the video comment message me if you have any questions my discord is below if you want to join it and post your renders and just talk to a bunch of artists uh, all day long it's a lot of fun my Instagram's there go check out my renders my Twitter as well uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial